Knock on wood. No part of a wood. <laughs> Hello, folks. Hello. We're here, we're here tonight looking at... Now, Maria, I'm sorry. You were saying something, and I interrupted you with some jumpy music. Uh, I'm cool. It's like, like chit, chit, chit. Oh, I will say this. Now, tonight, folks, we're looking at Dosecki's Ambar. Last week, when I was on with the Canadians, Woo. Uh, there was a lot of choppiness on um, our broadcast, and they said that it wasn't from their end. There was just a, a network problem. So if we have that, it's not our fault. Okay. Uh, anyway, Dosecki's Ambar's is a beer that's been around since 1897. What do you know about that? We're going to examine it. And uh, it used to not be called Dos Equis Ambar, and it was simply called Dos Equis. But actually, it wasn't even called that. It was called 20th Century Beer. Interesting. And that's why they used two Roman numeral X's, 10, 10 is 20, because in 1897, they were getting ready for the turn of the 20th century on January 1st, 1901. And so William Haas, who founded the brewery in Veracruz, Mexico, decided to call it 20 for the 20th century. But no one ever could figure out what this was about, so they kept calling it two X's. And the brewing company was like, no, it's not two X's, it's it's 20. And then after, like, decades, they just gave up and said, okay, if everybody wants to call it two X's, that's what we'll call it two X's. But the beer was actually supposed to be called 20th century. Uh, Very nice. And uh, it's 4.7% alcohol. I presume everyone has had this before or not? Um, I can't recall ever having the Amber. I can recall having the Especial. Okay. I've, I've, had the, I've had the Especial, but this is my second Dos Equis Amber. I had my first last night. So. Another. Okay, so you're new to it. Also, Marie, you've had it. I have not had it. This is my first time. I don't have too much experience with this style either, so. Michelle Stitches, you've had it? I think so. I don't really remember. Beer Co? Definitely. Yeah, I like this beer a lot. Now, um, a lot of people will tell me, I like the original Dos Equis, the green bottle. I say, wait a minute. That's not the original. Mm -hmm. That was introduced in 1984. Ooh. That is the new one. It's only 31 years old. This one is over 110 years old, 100, going on 120 years. So, in fact, this is the original one. And Eric, you might, you're going to start off, start us off in New England. You could tell us what kind of beer this is. Um, they're considering this to be a <laughs> most of the internet. They're considering this to be a Vienna style lager. Yes. And, I saw that on Beer Advocate, yeah. Yep, and it says 4.7%, yep. Um, and I'm getting pretty much from, I'm using the, uh, uh, what do you call this thing, the Sam Adams Boston Lager Glass. I don't know if you can tell from my feed uh, hey, hey. on my side, but it is an extremely carbonated, high-charged uh, beer. It's pretty amber, light copper, and it's pretty... Uh, um, fil uh, it's pretty filtered, and the head is actually sticking around somewhat pretty nicely. Now, when we did the uh, Victoria, which was 4%, that being a lager, don't you remember? It seemed like it was a little more red, and this one is a little more brown. Yeah, I think this is going to be more towards that Vienna lager, almost an amber ale style more so than the Victoria is. It definitely, to me, the smell has way more of a big... Big multi base to it. That sweet and multi. What is that? Yeah. And, and what is that, Maria? Is that like a khaki colored head? Yeah, I would call that tan or khaki colored head. Now, <laughs> Eric. Yes. Uh, everybody, everybody. And we're going to go to Eric, and then we're going to go down the road to New York. Posnansky wanted to join us, but he has to work tonight. He said, well, I have to work. I said, your job is a little more important than a beer examination. He agreed with that. Really? Um, <laughs> it's, it says, um, this beer has a soft, fruity... I'm reading on the uh, Heineken Mexico website, because in 2010, Heineken bought Cuauhtémoc Montezuma, okay? So it's now part of Heineken International. It said... Uh, 
and y'all can tell me if they're off or on track as we drink through this to me. It says the beer has a soft fruity aroma and a hint a hint of citrus and it has a pleasant aftertaste of roasted malt. It is a Vienna style type lager drink with a little bit of foam and small bubbles. Its aroma is sweet roasted malts and a little caramel and they said the taste is balanced with sweet notes of malt, roasted nuts <laughs> and caramel and bitterness of hops and mixed nuts. Well golly, all of this in this beer Okay. Um, I see it. Like I see it. Sure. <laughs> Not practically none of that in this beer. As a matter of fact, the, the Vienna Lager is um, is in the same category as the Oktoberfest. In fact, they're they're placed together in the BJCP because their their similarities are so close together. Um, they they both use decoction. It's similar to the Oktoberfest but less intense. What you're looking for is a soft, elegant malt complexity. Clean lager character, no fruit, no diacetyl, no DMS, um, low noble hop character, subtle hops, and no caramel, not in any category in this beer. If you're smelling caramel, that's wrong. If you're tasting that, it's wrong. I'm out of luck then on this beer. I'm getting both of those things. <laughs> Can I? That's, that's Can like I? the main style. That's the main style guideline, right, to this, to this beer is no caramel. Um, and, and the differences between the Oktoberfest and the Vienna Lager are, are basically, there's only two, um, the color and the mouthfeel. So it should drink very similarly to that. It should have a toasted malt character, not a roasted malt character. Roasted flavors are too strong, and so is caramel. Caramel is really firm and stiff um, to a beer. This is supposed to be um, malty and seriously malty, but not have caramel. All right. I, I, I'm all, I think it's a, a bready type ball. Bready. Well, let's go down the line and everybody can tell us what they think about it. And then at the end, here's an idea. At the end, we'll go back, we'll loop back around to everyone again, and then they can tell us if they would buy it a, a second time. You know what I'm saying? Like if they would want to have it again. So yeah. first we'll go to Eric in the Northeast in Massachusetts. What do you think about it overall? You know, like we know what it looks like. We're all looking yeah. at it. So like, the, the aroma, the flavor, and overall impression of it, and then we'll but but save the will you buy it again till we loop back the second time. Um, the overall impression of this beer is I am actually surprisingly enjoying this beer. I didn't know um, really what to think about those Eggies because it's got such a uh, commercial hype about it that sometimes the hype ain't worth what the product is that they're trying to sell, but. I'm enjoying this one a lot. I, th I think compared to a lot of, of these other darker um, amber lagers or even some of the lagers that we've had from Mexico, it's got a really, it does have that really rich, uh, roasty, malty kind of a flavor. I think maybe it is uh, bread, like maybe it is like brown bread, kind of like John was almost trying to describe there. Um, a bag of mixed nuts, I'm not too sure about that. Um, citrusy notes, I'm not too sure about that. There is a nice little faint, I don't know if it's hoppy, but there's a little faint um, bitterness towards the end that dries up very nicely and it invites you to drink more of that beer. But I definitely say I am quite pleased with the beer. Okay. Now down, down to the southwest a little bit into New York State in the mid-Atlantic area of America. What do you think about this, your uh, uh, general impression, aroma, flavor, and all that, Maria, like, kind of like what Eric did? Maria, hey. Javon, the girl next door, yes. Uh, well, I, my general impression is that it's, it's softly dry to the palate. Um, it's got a, a tremendously forward malty presence, right, but it's, it's bready, it's brown bread, like what Eric said, but it has like a thick crust on it. The character that you're looking for is what you'd call melanoidin, and that's that dextriny softness that you'll taste in this malt. Like you get that dryness that comes across your palate, but then there's also that softness that's that's kind of the the contrast to that. And the the identifying characteristics, as far as I'm concerned, the two that I told you about, one relating to color, that has to be the difference between the Munich malt and the Vienna malt. Whatever's used in the Oktoberfest maybe is the other one is used in this, and that's why it's a different color. Um, and the other difference was in the mouthfeel, it, different from the Oktoberfest, this beer should have um, a residual sweetness to it. 
which it does. When you swallow, you'll notice that. You get a good hearty, bready, right? But no no real fruit, no dark fruity malts, right? No, no um, raisins, no plums, no figs, nothing like that. No caramel, no toffee. But a, but a beautiful, elegant softness from that malt. That's, that's what they're talking about. And I like this. I think it's tremendous. And one of the things that I noticed about this beer when I was reading some reviews is that people literally described the style to perfection concerning this beer and then gave it low ratings. Ooh. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just not yeah, it, it was like Maybe reading they don't like the guidelines over and over and over, right? It, it's this, it's that, it's the other thing. Oh, 3.2. It's this, it's that, it's the other. Oh, 3, 3, 2.95, you know? It, it's a good match, I think. That's because it's not made by a microbrewery. <laughs> there you go. And if you're a beer you, snob, Michelle. you're not allowed to rate highly a beer that's not made by a microbrewery. You know, <laughs> these websites sometimes... Now these websites sometimes I just shake my head. What you know, what they put out. I'm like, come on, guys. I mean, just get your bias out of it, man. Just mm -hmm. you know. And then some people will say I don't like the style, but that doesn't make the beer bad because you don't like the style. That's the other thing I was gonna say. A lot of people rate on whether they like it or not, not on the style, and that's not fair. If you're drinking a porter, you rate it based on how is it. Porters may not be your beer of choice, but how does it compare to other porters? You know, otherwise, don't rate beers you don't like because you're just going to give them a bad rating, whether they're really good or really bad. This one right. Is. Now you're right. Now we're gonna we're gonna go down the road to Zone One East. That's me, John. Then we'll jump to Zone One West. Always the highways, Jay. <laughs> anyway, I mean, this is not about highways. This is about beer groups. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I think this is a very enjoyable beer. I've had this beer uh, numerous times before. I mean, it's just like everybody else says. It's that bready malt. It's, it's a sweetness. I mean, you get a little bit of the fruitiness in it. And the, the sweetness in it, I mean, but overall, I mean, the bodies, I mean, it's a light bodied, moderate carbonation. It's just a good overall beer. And in general, I mean, you can't go wrong with it. I mean, I've got that much down, it's still highly carbonated. I mean, it's just an enjoyable beer. Okay. What I mean, about some? It's nothing inoffensive on this beer. I mean, it's just a great, crisp, clean beer. So if you were down in Mexico in Veracruz on the Gulf Coast, you could drink a good amount of it. Well, I'd pound them. You could get hurt. <laughs> yeah. How about Zone 1? This, uh, oh, I go along the lines of what everyone else has said. You know, it's definitely, uh, it's got a little bit malt forward. It's definitely sweet all the way through the middle of the drink, and then it dries, dries out as it finishes. Um... I get a little bit, a little bit of toasty. I get a little bit, just a little bit of henna, henna caramel. Uh, but you know, it's it's brewed for a specific price and for a specific group of folks. I think it's a good clean beer. There's nothing off putting about it at all. Okay. Now before we go on, I think I have never seen this beer in cans. It says six pack of twelve. So apparently it's only in these 12-ounce bottles because I've never seen the tall cans of it. I've seen tall cans of the green, the Especial, but I've never seen cans of this at all. Or maybe y'all have. I have never. I've seen the green cans of the margarita, the margarita version that they have of this beer. Yeah. That's what I was getting ready to say. That's the only canned version of anything I've ever seen is that Rita Vill or whatever it is they got. Dos, right. Dos oh, well, no, well, down, but down here we get canned Dos Equis Especial. We get 12-ounce cans. We get the 24-ounce tall cans. Yummy. We get... Uh, we big cans of liquor store today. I haven't seen them in Alabama yet. Dos Equis, Jay. Huh? I come we didn't walk around with Dos Equis. We <laughs> <laughs> were in New Orleans? Yeah. I was, I was drinking because I was drinking Mickey's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it was a dollar for that big twenty-four ounce can. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no, it was a, no, it was, a, it was a pint can. Yeah. And, and I, that guy was acting crazy in that store, so I just wanted to get out. So I grabbed the Mickey's and I was going, but it was good and cold. But um, John was in there with me. And we were like, 
is this guy going to start killing people? We're going to die any time. <laughs> it was pretty scary. All right, now, um, where are we going next? We've got the north. Oh, okay, we'll go down south to, yeah, Jean says Mickey's is the real deal. It is for <laughs> it is for the French Quarter in some ways, you're right, because it was so mild and easy to drink. But let's not get off track on that. But uh, um, uh, what do you think about Dos Equis and Bar, um, Jean? I really like this. Uh, I really, really do like this beer a lot. Um, I was kind of hesitant at first when I got it, and I, I didn't know what to expect. But um, this is my second bottle I've had right now, you know, talking to you guys. Obviously, I was a little bit thirsty. I just got back from outside. And um, I'm enjoying this. I like the color of this beer. Um, it's a lot of lacing on it. I really am enjoying this. Um, it ha has. Uh, I don't taste any of that fruitiness that they were talking about in this beer. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't taste it. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a bread feel to it, but it goes down really smooth, and it doesn't feel very overwhelming to you. You know, to me, I really like it a lot. Okay. Now I'm gonna talk about it for a few minutes, and and then I'm gonna turn it over to our partners out west. And okay, now in Wyoming. Now, um, yeah, it does have a fairly good amount of lacing, as you can see. Yeah. It's got that amber appearance, and this etched bottom glass, the bubbles just won't stop. Um, definitely, there's a bread crust, bread crust. Mm -hmm. Like if you peeled the crust off and you were eating it, um, but you can smell it too. Sometimes you know it, when you open up that loaf, or that the bag. Ah, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe there's the slightest bit of citrus. I'm just thinking maybe, but that might have been implanted in my brain by Quatermak Moctezuma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's so faint, it's not really worth talking about. Um, I'm just getting bread, and I know that has to be coming from the barley malt, and the flavor, it's bread crust. The sweetness is so subtle. No one could drink this beer and say, it's so sweet. How could you say that? Right. The Not bitterness. No. The bitterness is there, but it's so mild. I would think the IBU on this beer couldn't be any higher than 13. Um, the body is medium. It's light to medium. It's not super watery. It, it does have some body and the finish is on the dry side and the drinkability is incredible. I mean, if you drink one, you got to drink about eight, really. But of course, I'm not going to do that. But um, <laughs> Come on. Uh, it's got this, like Maria was talking about, this backwash. The backwash in it is, or I guess you, the better description is the undertaste. It's interesting. You know, this beer is interesting. It has character. Well, maybe since they've been making it since 1897, they have some kind of handle on it. But I'm very favorable towards it. Years ago, I might have said it was dull. But years ago, I had a little trouble picking up subtleties. Now I'm <laughs> going to turn it over to the beer cup and the Western lady. <laughs> <laughs> they were out here in Wyoming. I figured it was appropriate. <laughs> I'm, I'm your twin tonight, Eric. I got my Sam Adams glass too. Okay, I'm going to. Um, before I say anything, admit my palate is compromised because I just got through eating dinner and we were eating a casserole and I got a really, one of those bites that didn't seem hot and was hot in the middle and so I have scorched my tongue. So I'm not getting any sweet at all, which makes me very sad because I like a little sweet in beer. Um, I, it's very crisp. I am definitely the mouth fill. I'm getting the crispness and the effervescence to it. And I get a mild, sour aftertaste after I swallow on the back of my tongue with this. It's enjoyable. Um, this is not my preferred style. If you gave me this versus an Oktoberfest, I would take the Oktoberfest out of your hand so fast it might hurt because that's one of my favorite. <laughs> 
go-to drinking style beers. I'm really excited that that season is coming on. I love a good Martzen. So I like this fine, even though it's not necessarily my my favorite. And once again, um, being that I burnt my tongue a little bit just a little while ago, I'm not getting the full effect. So, well, But in general, I drink it again. That, that's wait, wait, been wait. Over about two weeks now. So. <laughs> now, if you were at a Mexican restaurant, you think it would go all right with, like, say, uh, yeah. enchiladas, enchiladas with a lot of onions on it or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I would take this or a Modelo. Negro Modelo. Yeah, depending on what, what I was eating. Maybe the Negro Modelo if I was really eating something super spicy because that's a little more um, light and refreshing. You know, this is pretty refreshing too. But yeah, I would definitely eat this with some Mexican food in a heartbeat. Okay. And I think the color is gorgeous. I think this is just beautiful. Yeah, I agree with that. I do too. I love the color of this. Now, a uh, beer cup. Yeah, you guys brought up Mexican food. You're going to about make me cry because <laughs> since wow. we moved out west, uh, there's a restaurant we used to go to when we lived on the East Coast that I really miss because they had great Mexican food, and a couple of days a week they had Dos Equis on tap for 99 cents. Wow. And so I would always get the Dos Equis Ambar. Mexican food, and it's just a perfect fit. I mean... Just, I can't think of anything better to match it with, and uh, I really miss getting it at that price. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, as everybody else has said, I can't really argue with anything that's been said. Uh, if I was going to criticize it at all, I think especially the very first taste I took, at least at this particular bottle, there was just a slight metallic mm -hmm. flavor, but other than that, I can't really... Maybe, like you said, Jay, maybe it's a little bit on the dull side, but... You know, dull can be good. Subtle can be great in the, in the right setting. Okay, now, is Oktoberfest better ice cold below 40 degrees or cold, say, 40 to 50 degrees in the fall, Jean says? 40 to 50. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've had it before, and, you know, I was just, just asking. I thought I had it around that temperature between 40 and 50 degrees. You know, now we're going to start. Like, we're gonna start. doesn't have anything to fear from room temperature. You can let any any clean lager that has no diacetyl in it sit to room temperature. It should drink exactly the same. No off flavors should develop if they weren't there in the first place. So the reason to have the lager, you know, ice cold, is kind of a myth. Forty five degrees is good, but it can you can pour a big mug right and sit with it. It's not going to harm it if it comes up to room temperature. Okay. Okay. Good well, answer. Yeah. <laughs> I like the hat, Eric. Okay. All right, Eric. I like <laughs> the hat. I need a hat. <laughs> I, I, and I and I've noticed even even having the um the West of Honor, um Oktoberfest that not all Oktoberfests are are all that dark, very rich, malty kind of a beer. That that West of Honor was very light, pale kind of a beer. Their Oktoberfest, not quite as pale as that. Howdy. Yes. <laughs> I have to do my nightcap. This is the last beer of the night, y'all. And this is only the second. I've only drank. This will only be the second beer of the whole day, so I'm being <laughs> responsible. Now, um, Eric, what do you think? Would you buy it again? Well, uh, this Dos Equis Ambar. I would definitely. Okay, okay, enough of that. This Dos Equis Ambar. It, it really actually is spelled with an A R, Ambar. I didn't know that. Me um, either. I would. Buy this again. I don't know if I would buy this again in a heartbeat, but I would definitely go out to the store and buy this if I wanted the amber style, something really light, thin, thinner, refreshing. Um, didn't want just PBR or Coors. I would definitely consider this beer. You know, a couple of times out of the month when I'm at the beer store, I'll definitely pick this one up for a change. I like it, John. <laughs> uh oh, Ranger Rick. <laughs> Well, uh, now we're going to go to Maria. What do you say? Would you buy it again? I definitely would buy it again. I like it very much. And not only that, I've noticed the subtle Noble Hops presence um, in my beer that, that I think gives it like a, a little vibrance to the drink. Um, this malt is, is stately and elegant. It's smooth. It's 
there's a thinness to the body that makes it so easy to drink. It's not even, you know, close to a fullness and yet it has so much bread. And I love how a good lager will do that, will just give you tons of flavor, <laughs> tons of readiness. Just it, it, it just tickles your fancy, you know, and then you have such a delightful finish because it's clean, it's light, it's crisp, and I, I really like it. I would put this with enchiladas, with mole sauce, with cocoa. Uh, mm. Like when I do my cocoa and chili rub for my pork roast, I would put it with that. Mm. Um, Carne because it doesn't have strong flavors, it will go with tons of stuff. Now I'm presuming that you bought more than a single. <laughs> no, you said. I did. I it, and it's tremendously reasonable. This was one of the cheapest beers I've I've ever bought. I think it was seven dollars for the six pack. It was so about, bought, about the same price for me when I bought mine. Seven yeah, dollars. The Victoria I thought was mo a little couple of dollars more expensive than this beer. And I think <laughs> really. Is is that much more better than Victoria? To tell you the truth. So Maria, oh. you. <laughs> Maria, you might even do your own video review for this beer as the girl next door on your own channel, possibly, since you bought six of them. Well, maybe. Hmm. I would like to see that. That's a foreshadowing now, coming up. Going down. Perhaps, perhaps I could even do my very down. first side by side and compare it to an Oktoberfest. Oh, that would be even more interesting. Even more interesting. I will be on the lookout. Okay. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. No. The Indiana Boys. Oh, Charles, where's your hat? <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you, I give a dollar twenty-nine. I bought two of these, give a dollar twenty-nine piece for them. I wish I'd bought six of them because I would yeah. <laughs> do the four off tonight. This is a phenomenal beer. Am I going to buy it again? Yes. Am I going to make homemade enchiladas and drink this beer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a great beer. Hey, John, the good news is, is we're six doors down, and I've got three left, so. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down, <laughs> uh, Yeah, definitely a buy again. Uh, like Eric said, I don't know if I'm going to go run, run it out and buy it right now, but I think for the perfect occasion, perfect food, definitely if you're in a Mexican restaurant, get you the big mug of it. Good stuff. <laughs> Excellent. Now, um, we're going down south again. Jean, would you buy this beer again? Absolutely. I would buy this again. Um, I would probably, you know, a six-pack, you know, it's, it was seven ninety uh, seven ninety nine at uh, the Rouse's where I, where I bought this. And, um, um, you know, and, and Jay, I know you mentioned the other day you bought a couple of beers from from Rouse's the other day, um, the other day as well. Has become my, my little place to get a lot of craft beers uh, here in Mobile. Um, yeah, I would buy it again. Um, I, I love the flavor of it. It goes down easy. Um, I think this would be great with some pork chops, and um, you know, be great with anything spicy. You know, and I, I'm I'm really really enjoying enjoying this beer. Um, uh, you know. I know Yingling. It's um, the Yingling Amber Lager. I, I know people, you know, dis dis the beer a lot. You know, you know, it's okay. Maybe a little bit bland for some folks, but it's okay to me. So I probably say this, then the um, then the Yingling, and possibly the Michelob Amber Bock. Um, oh, yeah. You know, I think that's also uh, probably be my three that I would I would select. You know, so but this this is a high mark for for me on this beer. Yeah, and sometimes they have this beer on sale for twelve ninety nine a twelve pack. Yeah, we must have the wrong area because you guys are always talking about beer on sale. I've never seen beer on sale around here. <laughs> John, really? Oh, right here, John? Yeah. John? Really? John, the place right off the interstate. All, all the Maybe. time, sir. All the time. You see this Miller High Life I'm drinking? Yeah. Hey, look, they've got it at that store, which is less less than a mile from me. Maybe it's maybe it's a mile. But, I mean, I can see it almost if I stand up and look out that window. <laughs> got it. <laughs> They've got Miller High Life right now. 18 packs, cans or bottles, take your pick, whatever you want. 18 packs for $9.99. That's, oh, wow. that's all I drink with Miller High Life. Yeah. Damn. How y'all like that price? How 
I hope the plane can hold a bunch of 999 Miller High Life when I fly down there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to stuff in your suitcase really good. Just like I did with the prestige. Now, stuff here's it. my turn. Would I buy it again? Obviously. I've bought it so many times. Um, so, yeah, it's in the rotation. I don't run out and buy it all the time. I'm not, like, geeked out for it. But I like it. It's enjoyable. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but then on the other hand, they don't claim that it's the greatest thing in the world. They're just basically saying, you know, even the commercials say, I don't always drink beer, but when I do, I drink Dos Equis. You know, that's all he's saying. Um, so I can go along with that. And, you know, every now and then they'll show the guy drinking. He's always drinking the green bottle, right? But they'll show him with the brown bottle sitting on the side sometimes. He's and, the uh, most interesting man in the world. Yeah. Uh, I call BS in that statement. They did make a special commercial where it says sometimes you want to uh, go on to the dark side, and they were showing Dos Equis mm -hmm. Ambar. There was a special dedicated commercial to this beer. I know the commercials are ridiculous and silly, <laughs> but, but I saw an interview with the president of Heineken International about a year ago online, and he said, you know, it's incredible. He said, when we first made these commercials in 2006. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> He said, he said when we uh -oh, the show, he said when we first put these commercials out, we thought it would be kind of popular and it would be okay. They never dreamed that it would be a ten year long that it would make the beer so popular. The beer was always popular. Stratus <laughs> beer popularity. And people love those commercials. So now we're gonna go Daddy, on you two out. the same beer. Do you think your daughter would drink this beer when she's older? <laughs> oh, John's been muted. He Sorry, just got muted. Uh oh. No offense, John. I didn't know it. That was a technical reason. Now, unmute yourself, John, and give us the John and give us that answer. Come on, hey, John. Would you? Okay. Well, we're gonna go out west. Sorry, Jean. You're still. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Go. Yes. Boom, you're back. She would probably drink it when she gets older, more than likely. Yes. <laughs> right. More probable than not. Probable no, than not. not. Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Free Brady. Yeah. Wait. Now we're gonna go out west. Okay. Bye bye. We're gonna go out west. Would y'all buy this again? Uh, well, yeah, I definitely would. Um, I usually buy it several times a year, uh, usually in 12 packs when it's on sale, because I'm such a cheap skate. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I always enjoy this beer. So it'll be in the house whether she cares to have it again or not. <laughs> I will say. Now we're we're going to end this. Oh, wait. Michelle, what I was do you say? Dos X Ambar es una cerveza muy delicia. Make oh, bravo! Yeah. Uh, High school Spanish! <laughs> Muy bien, uh, señora. Muy bien, señora. Now, uh, next week we're going to be doing a beer that's going to be a lot more controversial, I think, because um, it's not amber. It's just a regular old, what you call it, like street Rose beer. Love. Street Rose beer. Love yeah. the most. Yeah, well, I know a guy... That um, I go to. I sit, he, sits, he sits next to us at the baseball games in the spring, and he he's about uh, about 80 years old. He says, "Look, he used to go to Mexico back in the 1970s because he was a, a Spanish teacher. He said they would sell this beer for 10 cents a beer." I can drink a lot of beers, man. He said, "Believe me, I bought a lot of it, and I mean a lot." Because he is a dedicated beer drinker. I'm going to show you all that preview beer, and then we're going to cut it off. So hold on. <coughs> so. All right, Eric, while we wait. <laughs> this beer we're going to look at next week is about as ordinary as they come. But then the company makes no bones about it. And the company is the same people. Heineken of Mexico, Otomak Moctezuma. And this is extremely popular, but it's not, you know, like approaching world class by any stretch. And we're going to be looking at Seoul. Oh. I got it at Rouse's. I'll probably pick it up next week, my friend. They got your bank account there at Rouse's there, John. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And this is a quart bottle, so, uh. Ooh, yummy. 
All right. Well, thank you, folks. Any last words? Because we're shutting it off. I do. I've, I, you know, I've, I've, I've done this for a long time, and I've, I've drank a lot of malt liquors over the years, and I've kind of got away from them. I'm, I've started drinking a lot more malt liquors, but I probably watched one of the best malt liquor reviews I've ever seen in my life the other day, and it's by that man right there. John, that was an excellent video you done the other day. I watched Ice House movie. Edge, yes, and uh, <laughs> that was real good. And I watched every minute of it, buddy. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. It was it was uh, one of those. I said I picked it up and I said, well, let me give this a try. I mean, I've had it before, and I was I was eating it with something, and I said, you know, well, you know, what? I got it here. Let me go ahead and do a review, and I just did one, and you know, um, don't just that beer. That beer is quite good. You know, oh, yes. It's a hella stoppabock. Yeah. Now, so. <laughs> but you know, I watched that review. I will hang on a minute. All right. Well, thank you, folks. And Maria, we sure appreciate your appearance, and we hope to see you again. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. I hope to be back again. Next All week. Right. So, <laughs> the wear a hat, Maria. Wear a hat. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get one. I don't know my hat. That's the new rule. You have to wear a hat. All right. Thank you, folks. Get one. <laughs> watching this video production. <laughs> <laughs>